All right, this last set is actually going to have two different questions. All right, the first one we're starting with f of x, which is this blue line here. All right, so we're going to actually label that. And then what we're going to do is we're going to create f prime of x, so the derivative of x, and then f double prime of x. Okay, now the thing that you need to remember is that the stationary points. And remember, stationary points are max, min, and horizontal inflection points. Hips. That's kind of cool. So horizontal inflection points, or points of inflection. Does that make anything cool? Horizontal points of inflection. Hipoi? Uh, no, hip is much, much cooler. Anyway, so hips. Um, the stationary points will become the x-intercepts. So if you start with f of x, when you go to the derivative, the stationary points of the original function will become the x-intercepts of the derivative function, right? Because the derivative is 0 there. Therefore, that's the x-intercept. Now, one of the ways that I found most helpful to do this is to do a number line, right? You don't have to do this number line, the, sorry, the sine diagram, but a lot of people find it helpful. So I find my maximums and minimums here. There's two of them. One is at 1, and the other one is at 3. Okay. Now I'm looking at my original graph. My original graph has a negative slope here. Remember that derivative is the slope of the tangent of the original function. And so here, this is all negative slopage. So we're going to have a negative slope there. After this, you'll notice that it goes positive. You do have to be careful. If this is an inflection, then it might be negative again. But it's not. It goes back positive again. So we'll have a positive slope there. And then after this point, you now have a negative slope again. Now, we use the original graph to tell us about the slope. Now, we're going to use that actually gives us the values of the derivative. So now we want to make sure that we match that. So the negative values should be below the, below the x-axis. I hit the x-intercept there. Then I need positive values. But at some point, I've got to come back down and have an x-intercept again, which means it's got to come back down and then go down to now negative values. Okay. Now you'll notice the original graph looks kind of like a cubic. Not just a cubic, but remember this would be a positive cubic. This is a negative cubic. And because it was a negative cubic, then we expect the derivative to be a negative quadratic, which it is. A negative quadratic goes down. So we're going to have our x-intercepts here and here. And if you want, you can kind of put some dash marks or something to show that you understand those correlate. And then we'll just kind of draw our graph something like this. Doo -doo -doo, doo -doo, ta -da! And so there you have your derivative graph. Now, to do the second derivative graph, you're going to do exactly the same thing, except now we're just going to look at the derivative and do the derivative of that. In the end, it should also correlate to the original graph. But to be honest, we're just going to ignore that for now. So again, we're going to create a graph. We're going from a graph to its derivative. So I'm looking at the stationary points of the derivative graph. Stationary point is right there at 2, it looks like. Okay, so 2 would be my stationary point. Before that, what can you tell me about the slope of my derivative function here? The slope is positive, and then after that, it's negative. Okay, so this is now going to help me get that. Now remember, these signs came from looking at the slopes of the derivative graph. Okay, that will be important later when we go backwards. So I need to start positive, x-intercept, go negative. Okay, so here's my x-intercept, start positive and go negative. Note again that the derivative of negative x squared, you would move the 2 in front, which should be a negative linear graph, which it is. It's a negative linear slope. Now, the last thing is that you should make sure that your f double prime correlates with your original graph. Okay. Remember, when the double prime is 0, that should be a point of inflection. So we look at our original graph. It looks like maybe I'm changing from concave up to concave down. So yeah, that makes sense. The other thing is, is the second derivative is positive. 
then it should be concave up in our original graph. We go over to our original graph, and sure enough, it is concave up all the way up until 2. After 2, it's now negative, which means it should be concave down. And so, yeah, we create the second derivative from the first derivative, but it still matches up the maximum, the inflection point, the root, all have to match up there. Okay? So hopefully that's helpful on that specific question. Now let's look at going backwards. So this graph right here shows f prime. Now we're going to use our knowledge of derivatives to sketch a graph that could be f of x. So we're going backwards. Now remember in the previous one, when f of x had stationary points, f prime of x had x-intercepts. So now we're going backwards. We have this, so the x-intercepts will give us the stationary points of the original function. So x-intercepts here, here, and here. Those are the x-intercepts. So those need to be the stationary points for my original graph. Now, you don't know where they are, how high they are. You just know at which x value they are. Remember, when you take the derivative, like if I had 3x squared plus 4, right? That would be a quadratic graph that would be shifted up, right? Because of the shift up. When you take the derivative of that, you end up with 6x, and this goes away. And so that shift up disappears when you take the derivative. You don't know if it was a shift up or a shift down or what. All you know is the slope, and so you can work that out, but you don't know exactly how high or low it is. If you went backwards from here, it would take you to 3x squared, but it wouldn't give you the plus 4. There's no way to get that without other information. So at this point, we can't do that. But what we can do is we can just say, okay, well, let's create a graph that could be f of x. So I need a max or min right here at the x-intercept. So x-intercept, so I'm just going to create a stationary point right there. And to show that it's a stationary point, I'm just going to kind of make it horizontal. That's to remind me that it needs to be somewhat flat. Now, remember this graph right here is the derivative. So right here, I have a positive derivative. So f prime of x is positive. What does that tell me about the original graph? Well, if the derivative is positive, then the slope should be positive. So I need a positive slope leading up to this stationary point. So I just need to go positive, positive, positive until I get there. Done. Now what happens after that x-intercept, after that stationary point? Notice that the values f prime of x is now negative. That means that the slope of the original graph should be negative. So we need to have a negative slope. So we go negative, negative, negative. Now what should happen here at 0? That's another stationary point. So it needs to flatten out again. So I'm just going to go negative, negative, negative. At some point, it doesn't matter where, I need to flatten out. Okay, And you need to make it obvious that it's flattening out. Don't make it, don't go like this. Don't go like right? Because that's a little too obvious. But, but make it enough that it, you can tell that it's flattening out. And it's not just crossing that line. Now, after 0, note that the values of the derivative are still negative. And that means the slope still needs to be negative. And so from here, I need to go negative slope again. And it needs to stay a negative slope. How long is the slope negative? Until we get to our next stationary point, which is right here at 3. So it needs to go negative until here, where it flattens out again. And then after that, note that the derivative values are positive. Remember, this blue line is the derivative. And so when the values are positive, the derivative is positive. When the values are negative, the derivative is negative. We're not looking at the slopes of this blue line. We're looking at the values, because that tells me about the slope of the original. And so once I cross here, the derivative is now positive and goes positive really fast. And so therefore, it should then go back up. So what you should have is a maximum, a horizontal inflection, and a minimum. Now, if you want, you can go through and pay closer attention to where the horizontal inflections are, pay attention to where all of the sign changes should be occurring, right? Where you have a max or min, that's where you should be having a change in concavity. So you can make those adjustments as necessary if you need to. But this right here would be just fine, showing that you have the correct maximum horizontal inflection and minimum. Those are what they're looking for. All right, so that's all for this set of videos, and good luck on the future.